Hey guys, welcome back to today's video. Today is Sunday, February 2nd, 2020, and it is the day before the Iowa Democratic Presidential Caucus. This is a day that many of us have been waiting for for a very long time, and it's going to be very, very interesting and going to set the pathway for the rest of the nomination process. As I previously mentioned in my past Iowa video, I think about five days ago, I said that Iowa in the long run wouldn't have that big of an effect on the overall delegate count, but it does set the stage for a lot of these candidates if they outperform or underperform for the rest of the primary season. This is the first time that Democratic voters will be able to say that they will be there going to uh, put out their votes or in this case a caucus, uh, stay in their groups for these Democratic voters. One notable candidate that will not be on the Iowa ballot is, uh, not Iowa ballot, uh, that would not be contesting the Iowa caucus is Michael Bloomberg. Uh, pretty much, he is not going to be a part of this. I don't even know why they uh, considered him in preliminary data. Obviously, you can see here he's been cut out because he's no longer an option, but that t boils it down to Sanders, Biden, Buttigieg, and Warren in the top four, and then Amy Klobuchar narrowing uh, up to uh, double digits, and then Yang, Steyer, Gabbard, and then the rest of the candidates are not uh, on the polling data. So pretty much the final overall numbers are Sanders plus 3.7 statewide. Now, I know a lot of you guys don't really like the fact that uh, I tend to trust a lot in polling data, but generally this does give us the expected outcome. But right now it is very close. I'm going to discuss what I believe uh, will be the results at the end of the video, who I think is going to get first, second, and third place. I may double into a fourth place candidate, but uh, you can pretty much already tell uh, from the straight, uh, I guess, polling data. But Bernie Sanders, I mean, he was not leading for most of this primary season. Sure, there was less polling data given, but Joe Biden definitely had the lead for the longest amount of time. Elizabeth Warren overcame all of the candidates at some point, and Pete Buttigieg had a pretty strong hold. Uh, Overall, in the state of Iowa, he has since gone down to third place, according to the last few polls taken. And Sanders, I mean, he's jumped up a lot. Biden led uh, up until, I mean, even a couple days ago, and Sanders just overtook Joe Biden. And now, if you look at the national data as well, Bernie Sanders is going up. In fact, it shows state by state uh, how well each candidate is doing. So national Iowa, New Hampshire, Nevada, South Carolina, and then betting odds. Uh, betting odds is interesting. I want to discuss the predicted market for uh, the Iowa caucus, but Sanders has, for the first time in a while, uh, led over Joe Biden in terms of the national betting odds as to who will actually be the nominee. The way that this works is where people throw their money behind specific candidates as to who they genuinely believe will win the nomination. And this uh, is uh, really interesting because the market's typically uh, don't fluctuate from where the actual results are going to be, mainly because a lot of these people, I mean, they're betting thousands, hundreds, or thousands of dollars on who the nominee will be. At one point, Elizabeth Warren was up to a 50%, uh, I mean, a 50 cent share uh, at some point, uh, in, I guess not in the predicting market, but on uh, RCP on the overall average, actually, so 53.4%. But I mean, that's absolutely insane. Now it is Bernie Sanders over Joe Biden, followed by actually Michael Bloomberg, which doesn't really make any sense considering that he's not expected to get pretty much any delegates and can't get any from Iowa. So not just that, let's take a look at where the 538 average gives uh all of these candidates. So Joe Biden, like I said, previously led in the state of Iowa. I mean, he was the expected winner, but now Bernie Sanders has the highest chance of winning. But if you take a look at the overall numbers, it looks like it's going to be a close race between Joe Biden and Bernie Sanders. Bernie Sanders, Joe Biden, followed by, I believe that is Pete Buttigieg, and then Elizabeth Warren. The rest of the candidates are down there. Uh, but pretty much this should show the expected results. I mean, this is a very respected organization ran by Nate Silver in terms of the politics aspect, and it's expecting Bernie Sanders to get 28% of the vote. It says it's fluctuating between 13 and 43%. Obviously, 43% would be a very, very high number. It would be amazing for Bernie Sanders, but he is expected to get a pretty close number to Joe Biden. Same thing uh, if you look at the predicted market, Sanders, Biden, Buttigieg, Warren, the same thing that we're seeing overall. But what was different from now compared to 2016? Well, if you take a look at the polling data, like I said, the data wasn't actually that far off, okay? If you take a look at the most recent five polls, they expected a Hillary Clinton victory, and the, the three most recent polls showed a narrow victory in two of the polls and then a large victory for Hillary Clinton. It ended up being more in favor of Bernie Sanders, but Hillary Clinton did end up winning in the state of Iowa overall. But also, if you take a look at the surrounding areas, 
uh, from the states uh, compared to talking about Iowa. Bernie Sanders did pretty well as well. Uh, Hillary Clinton, same thing. It also is something to mention that um, that poll didn't actually come out. I remember seeing uh, it on the news uh, when I was at Wegmans, actually, I was in line. They had a TV up, and it was a countdown for the final poll to be released. It didn't end up being released. And uh, there's a whole discussion as to whether or not it was leaked online. I haven't seen a reputable source show the leaked results, but if there are leaked results, I definitely would want to see them. Uh, but I do not see any as of right now, 2.20 p.m. Uh, on Sunday, the day before the Iowa caucus. But what exactly am I expecting? I mean, I made a video about that, about what the implications were past the state of Iowa. But also, number one, if you take a look back at history, I mean, Bernie Sanders was practically a nobody candidate when he came into the uh, Democratic primary. I mean, it was laughable that he was running only because he was polling at 3%. A lot of people said if Joe Biden doesn't run, Hillary Clinton was for sure the nominee. Sure, she did win, end up winning the nomination, but she did not do too well uh, against Bernie Sanders the, as well as she could have. I mean, she was the star candidate for the longest time polling at 60 70 percent state uh, nationwide and then since went down to around 53 percent so definitely lost a lot of her supporters to bernie sanders now uh right now joe biden i mean he led for a long time even on the national average uh, but it looks like bernie sanders may actually end up overcoming joe biden here uh, joe biden is not at his lowest point but bernie sanders definitely is at his highest point in fact there has not been once this entire primary season where Bernie Sanders has overcome Joe Biden or been higher than he is right now. He is currently at 23.5%, the equivalent of 24% nationwide. Joe Biden is at 27%, practically a 3% lead for Joe Biden, which is definitely not a good look. At one point in time, Biden led by 26% on the national average. So uh, just for a little bit of perspective as to uh, whether or not Joe Biden lost voters, the answer is Yes. So Bernie Sanders, I mean, let's talk about what I expect and who I expect to win. Uh, pretty much, I expect it to be exactly as the polling data predicts down to the third place candidate. Bernie Sanders, Joe Biden, Pete Buttigieg. That makes sense. Pete Buttigieg, sure, he had a base here, but he doesn't have enough to overcome the top two candidates. He did at one point, not looking too uh, nice for him right now. Elizabeth Warren, I could understand how she could overcome Pete Buttigieg, but he spent a lot of time into this race. Elizabeth Warren is definitely going to do well elsewhere. Sure, she could do well in the state of Iowa if things end up in her favor, but she's also not pulling too well on the national average, so she doesn't look like a top contender, or at least a Bernie Sanders or Joe Biden caliber contender for the Democratic nomination. A lot of these people that are going to be in line or in a group for Amy Klobuchar, Andrew Yang, Tom Steyer, it may be two, five, eight percent. But at the end of the day, when this race comes down and is currently spread to be a 3.7 percent margin of victory for Bernie Sanders, every single person matters. And when a lot of these voters are going to realize that, hey, my candidate won't make it past the Iowa Democratic caucus and will probably drop out due to low performance, they're going to end up moving over for other candidates. I don't see that happening for Pete Buttigieg, though. He has a very strong coalition. And if he does win in Iowa, and he is polling pretty well in the state of New Hampshire, in fact, we could see him remain in the race for a pretty long time. But past Iowa, Bernie Sanders is on the pathway to win the nomination as it stands right now. There are a number of obstacles for him to overcome, but Joe Biden is just not holding on to the states that he needs to. New Hampshire wasn't exactly an expected victory, though. Uh, Bernie Sanders did overcome Hillary Clinton last minute in the state of New Hampshire and ended up winning it by a very large margin. But Iowa, we can pro probably expect Bernie Sanders to actually outperform what is expected according to these opinion polls, as he did in 2016. <clears throat> yes, the race will still be close. <clears throat> and I don't exactly expect a lot of people uh, to make a very early prediction as to who will be the first, second, and third place candidates. But a lot of people can agree that Bernie Sanders is doing well in Iowa. In fact, Joni Ernst came out today uh, and discussed whether or not, uh, I mean, discussed Joe Biden and bashed him, essentially. <clears throat> not today. I saw the news report on it today. Uh, but Joe Biden took on Joni Ernst, who is actually up for re-election in the state of Iowa. So you can expect uh, Democrats to possibly be funneling money into uh, her opponent, even though it isn't exactly uh, too much of a toss-up state. It is Iowa. Uh, but, you know, a lot of Republicans seem afraid of Joe Biden, and a lot of Democrats seem to really like Bernie Sanders. Um, we can <clears throat> go back and forth as to who is the most electable candidate based off the numbers. It's Joe Biden. 
based off of everything else. It seems like it could be Bernie Sanders. But right now we're focusing on the Democratic caucus. And uh, Sanders looks like he's going to take the cake here. He's going to end up winning, um, most likely. My final prediction for this actually is Sanders, Biden, Buttigieg, and like I said, possibly Warren. Uh, Klobuchar, I do possibly see outperforming her numbers, but to be completely honest, Klobuchar is not going to make it past the state of Iowa. If she holds on to Minnesota, good for her, but uh, it's not the best option for her. Andrew Yang, I mean, yes, he's a well-known candidate, um, a pretty well-known amongst uh, my generation, amongst the internet, uh, the media but he doesn't exactly poll too well nationwide, nor in any of the early primary states. So thank you guys for watching this video. Comment down suggestions below, and I will see you all tomorrow.